for the sun rises in the east and still sets in the west. We want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for just looking down on wretches like us, for filling our soul and making us whole. We know, Lord, if it had not been for you, Lord, where would we be? And we just want to say thank you, Lord, for just all that you have done, Lord. Thank you for being in the land of the living. Thank you for the activity of our land, Lord. We may not move like we used to, or maybe like we want to, Lord, but we can move our land, Lord. And we want to say thank you. Because, Lord, somebody didn't get up this morning. Somebody didn't have food on the truck. Somebody didn't have a place to lay their head, Lord. But we can look at ourselves and say thank you. We know, Lord, that you are God all by yourself. And we know, Lord, that you don't need us, Lord, but we just want to say thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for just looking down on us, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for just being a good girl. Yes, Lord. Sometimes, Lord, we think that we don't deserve anything or we're not anything, but we know, God, in your eyes, we are what you want us to be, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, just walk through this place this morning. Someone may need a touch. Someone may need an encouraging word. And then, Lord, if there are those that don't know which way to go, we ask you, Lord, to just guide them. Guide their footsteps. You said in your word, Lord, that our footsteps are life unto our path. Yes, Lord. Lord, we just ask you to just guide us according to your will. Bless those that wanted to come, Lord, and could. But those that feel good in the body, Lord, yes, sir. and wanted to come but could, Lord, yes, Lord. just bless them and help. Then, Lord, not only St. John, but every door that stand open in your name. Yes, Lord. And then, Lord, don't forget about our White House, Lord. Yes, Lord. We ask you just bless each individual in there, Lord, that they just do the right thing, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just take care of the nation, Lord. And we ask you just look down on all of us, Lord, all different races, Lord. Because we know that we're one in you. Yeah, we do what we are called to do, Lord. So Amen. we want to say just say thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus, Lord. Just give his life that we may have life. And we know, Lord, there are no other foundation that's laid that already been laid for your son, Jesus. Yeah, so, Lord, just bless us. And never go behind our service. Bless us. Be with us. Just as you just remove Satan from my presence, Lord. We know he's still walking to and fro. See, we lay the body. So, Lord, we ask you just remove him from our presence, Lord, for a season. And then, Lord, when we've done all we can do, we can't do it anymore. We ask you to give us a home in our kingdom. We can never praise our name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
what uh, tithes and we normally do our tithes, but we're not going to ask you to come around at this time to, to meet us. We just want to come to you for our tithes and our offering. Amen. And also remember God loves a cheerful giver.
pray to him. So let me ask you something now. What do we have to do for God to hear our prayers? First of all, you got to repent. You have to ask God for forgiveness. And once you ask God for forgiveness, then God will hear your prayer. It may seem like sometimes he's not answering them, but he's hearing your prayer. When it gets time for him to answer your prayer, he already didn't answer it. He'll send his angel. You start reading in the book of Revelation, he'll send his angel down. And he said, oh, St. John is praying for this. Brother Lewis is praying for this. Deacon Blackrock is praying for this here. Go answer their prayers. Uh -huh. Amen. And remember, church, he's always answering your prayers. It may not be when you want it, but he's always on time. Amen. 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 And I'm going to ask that we pray. Amen. And I'm going to ask that we want to move, that you can stand if you can. You don't feel like standing, you don't have to stand. But we're going to pray. Amen. Amen. Eternal God, our Father, which art in heaven, God, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your many blessings that you restored upon each and every one of us. We thank you, God, for just waking us up this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for the food that we had this morning when we got up. And then, God, when we got up, we was able to walk. We just want to say thank you. We was able to look at our loved ones because you blessed us with the sight that we'll be able to see. And we want to say thank you. And then, God, you trust our hearts that we'll get up and come into your house, the house of God, one more time to be able to praise your holy and divine name. Because we realize that when praises goes up, blessings come back down. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you've done for each and every one of us. Because we was on our way to hell. You sent your son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he came down and, oh God, he tried to teach us because he knew, he knew when he came down that he was on his way to Calvary Hill. He already knew, God, that they were going to put nails in his hands and nails in his feet and pierce him in the side. But he stayed down, God. He didn't kill up. He hung up on the Calvary Hill until he gave up the ghost. They laid him in a barren tomb and he laid there Friday night, Sunday, Sunday, but early Sunday morning. He got up with all power. And we just want to say thank you. Power when our backs don't feel right. He'll straighten us up. When our legs be a little crooked here, he'll make us be able to walk. We don't even know what to say. He'll put words in our mind that we'll be able to talk. And we want to say, thank you. Thank you, God, for who you are. You've been mighty good to us. And we want to say, thank you. See, it's been all. We want to say, bless him. But we want to ask you for 
earth to forgive us of our sins, all of us, in the name of Jesus. Hear our prayer. The ones that sing, the ones that start walking, Brother Brooks, sorry about, we pray that you just bless him in a mighty special way. Brother Black, touch his body. Yes, Lord. Sister Anna Black, we pray that you bless her body. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, yes, Lord. have your way. Yes, and in this congregation standing here, hearing this prayer, we, we all pray to you because we need you right now. Killing is everywhere. People carrying their guns everywhere, in the stores, everywhere, in the church, everywhere. God, we need you right now. But the Bible is fulfilling this thing. For men has become lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. Touch us. And in the man of God, who's going to stand today, Roman Roberts, and preach the word of God. We pray that you just touch him in a mighty, special way. Use him this day, God. Touch him. Open up his mind and his heart that he'll preach a comfortable message. that will give us strength to be able to hold on for a little while. Thank you. Thank you, God. We magnify you. We lift you up. We praise you because of your word to be praised. We want to send up the highest praise when we say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you, God.
been a, bet, a blessing to be here this morning. It's been a rough week. And my, I had got that shot Monday, and next thing I know, everything was feeling good for a little while, and all of a sudden my back went back to her. And then all of that, and my wife, she had to go to the hospital. She stayed in the hospital a day or two. And well, she was having chest, uh, chest pain, so they kept her and did that stress test and everything. But she's all right. I prayed, I slept, stayed there with my, my wife all night. Stayed there and prayed, and God saw it through. All right. Amen. I don't know how you feel this morning, but I feel pretty good. You know, Pastor called me the other day, and I, matter of fact, I was at the hospital when he called me and told me, he said, there and I'm kind of tired. I said, well, Pastor, he said, well, you want to preach? I said, yeah. I said, yeah, Pastor, I'm working on it. I got something in mind. And God always giving me something. And I'm just grateful for my pastor that gave me the opportunity. And I'm grateful for God that gave me the strength to give me the will to stand. If you don't mind, let us stand right now for a minute and we'll sit back down. Let us pray. Eternal Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, we come this morning for no other reason to give you praise and glory and honor. Lord, we are here thanking you for this opportunity to stand in your holy and divine name. We ask you to hide us behind the sacred place, your cross, and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, God, and keep us, Lord, that we may increase, we may decrease, and you may increase. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Verses be 31. We're not going to be here long. We're just going to uh, be led by the Holy Spirit and say what we need to say, and then we're going to sit out. Isaiah 40 and verse 31. I thank God for every member of St. John. I thank God for when I look over here and I see my brothers, Brother Blacklock, Brother Cecil William, Brother uh, 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 Brooks, all these guys here, man. I'm telling you, they've been a, they've been a blessing to me. And like I said, I, I wouldn't be here with them, with, without the Lord helping them, I wouldn't be here. And Brother Keith, all these are dealing women, teachers, strong, sister, Mac, pastor, and all these, man, I tell you. It's a blessing when you want to stand and know that whatever you bleed for the Lord, you are not man standing. And you're not that man telling nobody either. Uh, uh, I say, uh, let me read this because I feel good. I, <laughs> I feel good this morning. Uh, we're going to read one verse and we're going to sit down. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. And they shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. May you may be seated. Amen. Open your eyes. You know, when I read this, and when the God, when the Spirit led me to this, and I looked and I looked, I meditated and I did research, I looked in the comment, commentary, I looked in my word, come forward, and I looked in the study Bible, and when I looked at that word, it didn't jump out of that whole text, that word, wait, jumped out. And see, that's the problem. Let me, let me, let me say, our text this morning is going to be wait. And see, that's the problem with so much. Uh, well, let me say that. Let me bring it home. Let me, let me bring it. Let me take my time. The pastor said, "You know, he said day that way." And I wonder about what he mean about day. Day he was talking about. These are God people, and Isaiah was talking to God people. And see, we gotta realize that even when we are saved 
and sanctified, we got to learn to wait on God. See, a lot of problems with the church today, we don't want to wait. We want to do everything in a hurry. Matter of fact, we don't even want to pray about it. We just want to, whatever comes to our mind, we want to do it. But up here today, Isaiah telling us, we got to learn how to wait on God. He, uh, we are here. And then he went on and said, they that wait on the Lord, they shall renew their strength. And don't you know, without the strength of God, you can't do nothing? Without God's strength, you can't even move. And see, what the problem is, some of us, for some reason or not, we take God's word for granted. We don't study God's word and design for us to know him personal. Get a relationship with him that we may leave others to Christ. But the problem is, a lot of us, we want to know, well, as long as I got my religious, I'm all right. But I'm here, the religion is not all just about you. The religion is about how many you can, how, well, let me say this, you can serve God and bring others to God. And see, that's what the, we don't want out. You don't want, we don't even talk about, we don't even talk about women no more. You know, we feel like I got minds in the world on their own. But I'm here to tell you long as we are waiting for the Lord to come back, God is committed to us to try to go out and witness to other people. Right. Yeah. Witness, witness. He said wait. Isaiah will tell him to wait. You know every time Israel get in trouble, they got in trouble because they couldn't wait on God. They wanted to be like all the other nations. But let me bring it home to the church today. That's the same way the church. We want to be like these old mega churches. We want to get all the people what they want to hear. But they don't want to, we don't want to preach what the word of God said. We want to just get people to come in, fat in our pocket, or uh, get the church where we can get a mega church, our church look good. But how many souls are we saving? See, that's all it's about. It's all about saving souls. Here we go, Isaiah, one of the greatest prophets. He'll he tell the Israel, wait, wait on God. And then he said, we'll he will renew your strength. And I said a minute ago, he said, renew your strength. Don't you know anything that God has called you to do, you got to have the strength of the Lord to do it. Even if he called you to teach, Paul said, that whatever your ministry is, you got to learn how to wait on it. But a lot of times we get, a, we get something else. You know, we get that little in our work, in our voice, and the first thing is, God has called me to preach. But I'm here to tell you, you got to wait. If God has called whatever God has, whatever the Holy Spirit, let me back up, the Holy Spirit enlighten you on, that's what your gift going to be. But you got to wait on it. And while you waiting, what it is, it's called for praying, it's called for studying the God word, because if you can't preach something, you don't know. And then you can't teach something, you don't know. And how, and then we got people in position, don't know how to teach, don't know how to mission nobody, but we got a new position. That's why the church is so up and down now. We don't even know what we have in church. Some church goes to close. Because we got people that don't have the spirit of God in them. And God is not leading them. And then they shut the door of the church. Well, we don't need to go down there. But you know, as long as the door is open, if we truly saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, every time that door open, we ought to be in that church. We ought to be there working. But what done happened to the church now, we begin to think it's all about us now. But it's not. Isaiah said, wait. All right. And then he went on and said, strength. And then he went on and said, you know that word, that is four times in that verse. And then the word shall is four times in that, in that verse. You shall. And see, when the word is shall and said, God mean what it said. And see, what the problem is with the day in the church, and in our generation, we don't believe like the old saints do. When the old saints, they, when whatever they say, the Lord said, or whatever the preacher preached, they believe it. And they believe it. And what the happened to the generation, we try to figure it out all ourselves. I'm going to tell you, some things God don't give us. Some things we have to get it through the, the word of God or through the man of God, because he said, how can they hear without a preacher? So sometimes God, his, his man, got to give you that word. But you know one thing? We don't want to wait no more. There's a song that we get in the church. The choir sing the song, uh, give us a hymn, and then we are uh, the preacher get up, we ready to go. And then half the time, we don't even know what he preached on. Because we are so in and out now, we don't want to wait on the Lord. God gave us six days. He gave us six days to be in the Bible, so he rested on the seventh. So the seventh day is the Lord. 
Then our forefathers said it for us. But now we don't want to do it no more. Well, my baby's too good. I'm going to let her go out here and do this and do that. But we don't want to bring in the house of God. But the Bible said, Isaiah said, but they didn't wait. Don't you know it's a blessing in waiting on God? It's a blessing waiting on God. There's it been a lot of times in my life, I know for a fact, I would jump out and do this and did that. And when I realized I done messed up, you know what I'm saying? When you get in that hole, if it ain't God getting you out of the hole, the hole can do it, get better. See, we got to learn to wait on God. And when we're in the hole, we wait on it, he know how to get us out. But one thing about it, we try to get out ourselves. We try to use our intellect. We try to use the world system to get us out of whatever situation we're in. But I'm here to tell you, the world system sometimes can't help you. You got to depend on God. And what's going to happen? The church, oh, let me bring it back home to the church. The church, that's what it is. We are trying to imitate the world. But God, 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 the Lord chose us out. He called us out. But we can go back in the world, but not out the world. But we can live the life right before them. Here we are. Here we are. They said we are. They shall mount up. They shall mount up like a uh, wings of an eagle. Don't you know how an uh, uh, eagle is? Yes. I was observed on what that is that discovery child. <laughs> and how an eagle, how he would do it. When he get ready to fly, he'll shake himself and he'll push up his shoulder. He'll hop and get his shoulder. But when he get ready to take off, you know what I mean about a weak eagle? He's smart. He's a smart bird. He'll go so high and then catch the wind and, and then fly with the wind. He'll coast with the wind. And see, that's what the saints, what the saints of God ought to be. Every time the situation comes, we ought to coast in it. Because we ought to know that we don't have to worry about it because God got our back. See, but that's what's going to happen to us. We depend so much on ourselves. Oh, man, let me say this here. We don't wrap around ourselves now. We don't believe. We, we believe what we want about God. But I'm here to tell you, you got to take this whole Bible. You can't get half of it saying, I'm a, I'm a new saint. No, we ain't. We are. We need the old and the new. Then we need a revelation to get us right. But I'm here today to tell you, that's what's been happening to the church now. We are messing up. So we are coming together. We are fighting. Fighting against each other. Satan said it back and watching us fight. He's watching us talking about each other. Why, God, you going to get them straight? They ain't going to talk about each other. They cutting each other down. But we got to learn to come together and learn to get strength from each other. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. He said, mount up like an eagle. Then he said, run. I'm going to tell you now, I can't run like I used to. <laughs> I didn't even try to run like I used to. But I'm saying, he said, you, they should run and they should not be weary. But don't you know when you are doing something for the Lord, you don't worry about what's going on or what somebody else is doing. See, that's what done happen to a lot of folks in the church. We are not, we are being busy about it. We so busy about it and everybody else stuff, and we're not paying attention to our own self. But I'm here today to tell you, we got to learn how to wait on God. And then, you know what I mean, by waiting, and when I'm waiting on, when you're waiting on something, you know what I mean, you ain't got a chance to look at nobody else. All your focus ought to be on you. Because one thing, because we all got to give an account to God for ourselves. And they said, they ain't wait on the Lord. I love that. I can't get off there. Every time when I, when I was studying this, I was driving down the road, and everything would pop and say, they wait. You got to wait a lot there. I would get rid of a man put in front of it. I said, get rid of a pull out, but I said, I better wait. See, that's what I'm saying. Waiting is our everyday thing. Everything we do, we wait. And see, that, and that's what, that's just a lesson to learn. It's something to learn about waiting. Then he went on and said, they won't be weary, but they should walk in that thing. Don't you know that I can walk now? But you know one thing about this Christian walk? You got to have faith to walk this Christian walk. Your faith, your faith and your focus ought to be on the Lord. Amen. You ought to be focused on the Lord when you walk in. And you know one thing about a man or a person. What I think I heard Brother Sister said earlier. He said, uh, he said, the light, God will be a light to your pathway. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in, in Proverbs 3 and 5, he said, in all your way, uh, knowledge me. And he said, what? I will direct your paths. 
See, that's the problem with a lot of us. We don't, we ain't, like I said, we ain't learned how to wait. I'm so glad that I learned how to wait. Because if you know what I wait, I learned it might not be good with me all the time. I might not have money all the time. But as long as I have the Lord. And see, that's what the old generation, the old saint used to say. If I had the Lord on my side, you know, if I had the Lord on this and that, and then I know without a doubt that everything else will fall in place. See, what's wrong with this young generation? So a lot of us don't know that we have the Lord. But I'm here to tell you why you got life in your body. You ought to be trying to get to know the Lord and get the God on your side. Because you know one thing? Because if you live, I heard that you just said the old saying, if you live long enough, things don't come your way. But if you got the Lord, Church, waiting ain't all that easy for 
telling us we want to do things our way rather than doing them God's way. And he told us that he know how to walk, walk with the Lord, trust in the Lord. That's what the Bible teaches us. Proverbs. We have to learn how to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Me, not that I don't understand in all the ways of knowledge here in the details direct our path. Amen. He said that and going to extend the invitation to accept Christ as our most personal Savior. We have been out of fellowship with the Lord and we want to get right with Him. It's extended to us right now because Christ has been that. But with loud and years of God. You know the good thing about God, He sits up high, He sits down low.
truth saying this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink, drink it in remembrance of me. Now we keep on reading now. No. Oh. 